Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up, subscribe to this family-friendly channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any posts. Also, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, we have Bell Collective Season 1 Episode 3 entitled sisters in the struggle i have the full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then i give my review at the end no need to dig around i have all of the minute marks in the comments it's all coming up next now let's get to the recap so Tambra meets up with her parents and with her busy schedule, Tambra is grateful for every moment she could spend with her parents. She's glad that her birthday celebrations went well and has a lot of career goals, but her parents want to know where is the element of a family and a baby with all the planning. Tambra clarifies that a baby is definitely in her plans, but she wants to be married first. Tambra respects her parents' relationship and their marriage because they've been together for over 50 years. So, of course, they want Tambra to have the same thing that they have. Her mom continuously mentions her ex-boyfriend as her top pick of who to be with. And Tambra and her ex were together for 16 years, and her parents still continue to communicate with her ex because, of course, they developed a relationship relationship with him for over those 16 years. Antoinette meets up with the contractors and her friend Kaylin is there for emotional support. Antoinette is really stressed out about this dental practice expanding and now the budget has increased to $500,000. Antoinette says that since dental school she felt that she could go above and beyond within the dentistry world. She was one out of four black women in her dental schooling and now she's just proud of herself that she has this idea and she She's finally getting to see everything coming to fruition. After the contract updates Antoinette about the building's progress, we have Latrice that's joined them and the ladies proceed to talk about the brunch and Tambra's birthday party. And Antoinette is saying to them, did you notice Leticia shaded me every time she got the chance? She tells me that she's proud of me, but then she tells me that it looks like my wig is falling off my head. Antoinette does admit in her production clip that her and Latrice talk a lot of smack about everybody, but it's just privately and they make sure not to go and talk about it to anybody else. Antoinette tells Kaylin and Latrice that even though she through a little shade I am happy and I support everything that she's trying to do with real estate and trying to bring everybody together she says despite it all she keeps it real and Kayla wants to know what does that mean when people say I'm real or this is real and Antoinette laughs about it because she's saying she always have has to explain to her white friends what certain things mean but she isn't bothered to help them out she confirms that real is when somebody remains genuine and tells it like it is we cut to Marie's house and there's a recap of Marie explaining that her oldest son, Jerez, has three children all under the age of one by three different women. In the midst of her also taking care of her own children, she's taking care of Jerez's children and assisting the baby's mothers. Marie, on this particular day, is looking after her grandchildren, Carson and Keelan, while Jerez is off living his life. Marie's husband, Cedric, has always had a rocky relationship. They were married, divorced, and then remarried. We then meet KK, mom of son number three, and KK shares that Jerez doesn't respond when he's needed. And Marie says that she's always happy to help with her grandkids and their well-being. But Jerez has to learn how to be a dad and be there. Marie explains to production that the reason why she's taking care of everyone is because there was an agreement that Jerez would go to school and do what he had to do while she stayed to help him out with the children and the baby's mothers. We then meet baby mama number one, Tori. And Marie says to production that it's very awkward to have two different baby's mamas in her house, especially in the same room at the same time. After KK leaves, Tori says, well, remember I told you I need a math tutor for my class, right? And she says to her, well, you know, I'll be happy to take care of you and assist, especially my grandbaby, but I'm not going to take care of your man. Jerez has to be responsible. We then go to Latrice and she meets up with her publicist to continue the conversation about the company's expansion. Latrice's hubby is upset because she's having a meeting with Mel and he wasn't invited. He feels that he should hear all of the details since he is an investor. 
She has a brief conversation with her hubby and saying, hey, this was kind of a last minute meeting. We just wanted to go over a few details. But he is stressing that I don't care if it's small, big, whatever the case, I need to be informed about every meeting. So he's really, really upset. With the essential brand, it would be in addition to the Goddess Link's hair. And Latrice wants to make sure that they're on the same page, her and the publicist. She wants all of the hair care products to be in all retail stores and beauty supply stores nationwide. Latrice wants to inspire all little girls and help them believe that they can do anything that they put their minds to, especially when it comes to being an entrepreneur, because she started with nothing, selling everything out of the trunk of her car to being a multimillionaire. Latrice's hubby Cliff shows up and he's furious he wasn't invited to this business meeting. He wants to know, why didn't y'all invite me? Mel shows them the prototype of this product and also confirms that it was a last minute meeting just for her to update Latrice on what she was looking at. Just perspective ideas for design designs. And Latrice puts her foot down and lets it be known that this is my company and brand and I made it work even when my husband didn't believe in the idea. And Mel knows that her styles and what she prefers is what she brings to the table especially when it comes to branding she says to cliff in a production clip that you are a silent investor which means you need to be silent Marie meets up with Leticia just to catch up and is amazed at her home. She said, oh, it's so beautiful, so pretty. And Marie is like, girl, let me take off my shoes because, you know, in the South, that's a gesture of respecting someone's home, not only keeping the floors clean, but not bringing in any negative energy that you have into the home. But Leticia says, girl, no, you don't have to do that. That's only for the little kids. It's okay. Leave your shoes on. So they sit down and Leticia and Marie are close and have known each other for a very long time more than the other ladies they connected on a business level years ago and they evolved into a wonderful friendship and marie says you know Tambra's birthday party was wonderful until you tried to get me to sit down and communicate and have a conversation with latrice and leticia says yeah it was it was a good intentions i didn't mean anything by it i just wanted everyone to talk about it and the brunch situation and i just wanted you guys to have a moment an olive branch just so you could just air out what you wanted to say she's like okay because you know how i am so maurice updates her about her family situation and how she's been busy with her grandbabies and everything's keeping her busy but she also wants to share an unfortunate situation between her and Drez. Marie explains the situation where her and Jerez agreed that while he was going to school, it would be a school that was close to home where he could be close with his baby's moms and his children. But instead, she finds out at the last minute that he goes to a school three hours away. And when she brought up everything to Jerez, the next day he snapped on her and she said that that day she went to his room and before going into the room, something told her to press record because there's been situation and events that have happened and the grandsons or the Jerez would call their granddad and kind of chop up the story and make the situation more than what it was. So she wanted to record it to have proof of exactly what happened. She goes on to explain the story that as he's getting his things to leave for school, he's also getting the TV from the house. And she's telling him, don't take the TV. That's our TV. You need to purchase your own TV. And when he, she said that, he snapped. He started getting angry cursing at her yelling at her and everything just seemed so intense with him and she never saw this level of anger from him in the midst of him screaming and cursing Jerez leans into her as if he's about to punch her and her youngest son got in the middle of both of them and said stop Jay just stop and as he's going in for the punch he punches a hole in the wall next to Marie's head now the husband wasn't there at the time. So it's just her and Jerez and the youngest, the youngest son. So he wasn't there to see what was going on. Her husband. 
Letitia is just shocked in his behavior and saying, I would have laid him out if he would have raised his hand to me. And Marie continues and says, oh, no, before he left, he punched two more holes in the wall. And Marie gets out her phone to play the audio. And Marie says the way he talked to me was as if he hated me. And I'm I'm always taking care of him and his baby's mama. So this just it was just I don't think I can come back from it. And Marie clarifies that the only other person who knows about the situation is her friend and business friend, Essie. But she wants to tell Latricia because she needs her friend's support. She plays the audio and Jerez is screaming at her. Telling her this is lame BS that you're telling me is making me stop, a snap, F this. Oh, I should just... F and punch the wall and just going on and on. And even listening to the audio again brings Marie to tears. And Latricia's the, the, heart is broken. And she's saying, I can't imagine if my son behaved this way and said those things to me. And she wants Marie to know that she doesn't have to go through this situation alone and encourages family counsel, counseling. And from the audio, it sounds like Jerez has a lot of deep rooted anger and we're all breaking generational curses and, and anger can be passed down from generation to generation. She tells Marie to just hang in there, be strong. I encourage you to, to talk and also have family counseling because there's more that needs to be discussed. And there's so much more going on with Jerez that she needs to know about. We move on to Tambra and she's saying in a production clip that I remember telling Lakeisha that if she needed any help with any endeavors concerning Ferris Street, that I would assist her in any way that I can. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to meet up with the councilman and I know who that is because that's my cousin. Then they go to Jackson City Hall and they meet with councilman Stamps. Leticia is excited to share more information about revamping Ferris Street and councilman Stamps loves her drive her ambition and that she has everything planned out and she's done her research as well he explains that the first step is meeting with the plant department and they will begin a process called site plan review which will then be packaged to your site review plan for your contractor to come in to make sure that the building is up to par with the codes of today He's honest and he says that this process is tough, but you can do it. And what I want to see is people succeed and know that they can build things together. It takes an ecosystem of business owners working together to have a vision, especially with this project that you have with Ferris Street. And what many people don't know is that with Jacksonville, it was the second largest black economy in the country, second to Harlem. And so you are the spark that's going to create and going to inspire people to rebuild and regenerate this area. So I look forward to working with you in the future and we'll keep each other posted on the steps and where we are as they leave. Leticia has a moment of being overwhelmed and she's crying happy tears because she can't believe that this idea and this goal is actually happening, that the wheels are starting to turn and getting things done. Latrice takes a day off to be with her husband because she's busy and she wants to just take time to let him know that she's thinking about him. She's reluctant to get in the pool because when she was a child, her brother pushed her into a pool and she almost drowned and her husband is trying to convince her just get comfortable with being in the pool and I'll try my best to help you learn how to swim and she's like eh, I don't know and he's like baby when we when we make this pool I make sure the contractors to know that this pool will go no deeper than five feet so you're gonna be okay just go ahead and get comfortable getting this pool have fun and she's like eh, okay but I don't want to mess up my hair so she does the throwback of getting the plastic bag and wrapping up her hair making sure she doesn't get anything wet and she ties it up she's like baby does it look secure is it right he's like yeah it looks good come on and get in so she's getting in and he's trying to get her to lay across his arms and she's like no no, no wait 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 i'm not you know, you're not holding me right wait stop 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 so it's this comical moment of him trying to tell her how to swim and she's like you know you're really not a good instructor and he's like everybody that i taught has how to swim they know how to swim so apparently i'm doing something right he tries so many different ways to get, get her to be comfortable but he really isn't explaining it right she's just kind of laying across 
across his arm. And he's like, okay, well, kick and move, swim. She's like, well, how? How am I supposed to kick my leg? What? It, it, <laughs> it's a comical moment. And he's not a good instructor. And Latrice is really not opening to really getting in the water. So it was a cute fail. Later on, Jerez has agreed to come by and talk to Marie. And Marie feels that it would be best to have a mediator. So she called Essie to come by because Marie wasn't sure if her husband would be there at the house. He wasn't even there the night before, as she explains. We learned that before getting married, she had her own home and so did he. They have a daughter together and Cedric was not coming home that often. And Marie says it got old. It, it's getting so old, him not coming home. He'll leave. Sometimes he'll come back the next day. Sometimes I won't even see him for a month. There's a knock at the door and it's Essie. Marie explain, explains that Cedric's infidelity was the reason why they got a divorce in the first place. So Essie wants to know, you know, how is Marie doing? What's going on? And Marie feels that emotions are all over the place and she's never had this type of static with Jerez. Essie feels that Cedric is always in and out of the picture and Jerez, Jerez hasn't seen any consistent male influence in his life and that could be a reason for his behavior. Marie says that she feels Cedric should play his part in being there since he's the only man that's in the house. He's the lead, he's the husband, and he should lead by example. Him cheating and leaving all the time can leave this notion to the children that it's okay. This ha behavior is okay of you leaving and it not coming back for days at a time. Cedric gets upset and says that we have our own situations, our own challenges to deal with. So why are you bringing Essie into this? And Essie feels that it's her business to be there because her and Marie have halves on a lot of stuff and they're involved together with a lot of stuff. So when things aren't done right at home, it affects everything that she does. And she feels that Cedric doesn't contribute to anything and she feels that since you're not contributing, Essie says, I feel like I'm getting pimped. Cedric says that he feels that the true marriage is between Essie and Marie, and he's just there because he looks good in a suit. Essie feels that Cedric is just jealous because they're living their dreams, and they have good business sense, and they're coming together as women. And Marie confirms that he regrets that he couldn't be involved in her company, but now he's feeling some type of way. Jerez arrives to the house and Marie says in a production clip that her number one mistake was giving her kids everything. And she says to all parents, make sure that you don't just give them anything without any type of consequence because all you're doing is creating a monster. Everyone greets Jerez as he comes in saying, hello, how are you? Everybody sits down and Essie starts off by saying, you know, how are you doing with everything? And Cedric tells him how happy he is to see him. And Essie tells Jerez straight up, Jerez, your mom is hurting. And Jerez says, I know. And Marie says, the way you talk to me made me feel absolutely worthless, worthless, especially after everything that I do for you, your baby's moms, and your kids, plus my own, like, and the way that you talk to me, it was just completely disrespectful and uncalled for. Jerez says that he was upset because he felt like she was trying to control everything about him, and especially when he didn't want to go to Jackson State. So he says that he snapped. And Marie says that, well, you know, previously we talked about this. We talked about how I'm paying for your children, your baby's moms, and you, that I could have some say-so on where you went to school. My suggestion and what you agreed with was that you would go to the school that was closest to home so you could be with your boys. And the next thing I know you're going to a school that's three hours away like we agreed about this we talked about this we also talked about how last season you had three babies you didn't work out you didn't condition like you said you were and it, it did evolve to you not being on the team like you were supposed to be the plan that we talked about was for you to sit out and recondition and get prepared for basketball, condition yourself more, focus on school, and I would be here for you and your boys and your baby mama, and you could get yourself together physically and mentally. Like, we talked about that. Your children need you. The way that you handle me that night, punching holes in the walls and also kicking in my door, like, completely uncalled for. I'm your mother, no matter what. You, your level of disrespect, you have to respect me. I'm your mama. 
Jerez apologizes for his behavior and says that he was wrong. You know, you are my mom and I love you and I just shouldn't have done that. And, you know, Curtis says, you know, Jay, you were wrong, but I appreciate you coming and apologizing. And Maria was like, yeah, I appreciate that too. But, you know, you got to be here for you and your boys. When the baby mamas won't need you and they call you, you have to know that you have to be there. I, these are your kids. These are not my children. And because of the level of anger that you have, you can hurt someone unintentionally and I would recommend that we get some family counseling and you get independent anger management because that's something that we that you need and Jerez would you be interested in family therapy and individual counseling for your anger and he says yes so they hug and they tell each other that they love each other and we can see that it's the beginning of at least attempting to try to get some outside counsel and we don't know what's next but I just hope that everything is the best for this family and that is the end of the episode so this episode was bittersweet because we had a mixture of some good things happening and evolving for a lot of the other women. But it was unfortunate that Marie had that episode within her family with Jerez. It's very sad to see that because, you know, you feel helpless and you just want to wave a magic wand and just make everything better when situations happen within a family. With Marie, we see a, an example of how helping, quote unquote, which we think is helping someone or situations actually can enable behaviors and things that aren't consistent with the way that we're supposed to handle things as young adults young adults need as much guidance as possible but if, if they feel like they can get away with a lot of stuff then over time unfortunately it gets worse which i found which was very disrespectful when tori one of the baby's mothers of Drez was telling Marie, well, you know, I need that that tutor for math. It was just to me, it was just very disrespectful because she wasn't asking. It was like she was telling her. And that's an example of what I'm speaking of. Over time, we can see that Marie is just saying yes to whatever they need instead of them asking. And then it makes me think, OK, well, where are their parents and are they just as financially involved is Marie because it seemed like everything was just piling on top of Marie and everybody saw Marie as not only as a babysitter but ATM unfortunately I feel that Marie's husband is a cancer that needs to go away he seems very selfish and in and inconsiderate he's there he's in and out so I agree with Marie that he is setting this tone for the pe the children that are in the home that it's okay to leave and come back whenever when then when she said that he leaves for a month sometimes and then comes back oh i just found that very disrespectful they have a daughter together but there are other kids that are there that are seeing this and it's just very inconsistent kids need stability Kid kids need routine they need to see all of that and she is 100 percent correct that this is behaviors that just need to stop the fact that they were married, divorced because of infidelity, and remarried, it's just really disappointing that, of course, they probably thought that they should give their marriage another chance, but without counseling and really pinpointing why he's leaving and where he's going, ooh, it really makes me feel kind of bad for Marie, but if you keep allowing that, then people will continue with those behaviors. Um, exactly, moving on to the next point with Antoinette. I predicted in episode two that I had a feeling that Antoinette would be one of those messy people <laughs> adding fuel to certain fires. And I got that proof with episode three that, of course, she sat down and spoke face to face with Leticia saying, we're going to squash that. Antoinette, you said that you talk trash outside of the brunch, talking about her brunch. But then you tell her that moving forward, I won't say anything. I'm going to talk directly to you and you guys hope hug on it but then you do it again you talk to Latrice and her friend Kaylin about did you see how messy, messy she was and she talked about my wig you're keeping it going so unfortunately I was right about Antoinette and her being messy and saying one thing and doing it another it was good to see her development with her dentistry evolve but at the same time you're starting to confirm that you need some messy boots we 
do see in this series that that we have turn of roles when it comes to society with society women have taken this second hand some sometimes third hand when it comes to controlling their careers but now we see more women are taking control of their careers they're having children later in life so it has this dynamic of men starting to see where they fit in into that way of life into women saying i don't want to be married now or I don't want to have children now and I want to focus on career so now as western society you see men start to have a little static and feathers ruffled about these decisions we see that with Leticia excuse me we see that with Tambra Antoinette and Latrice and it's really uh interesting that Latrice's husband now wants to be part of her business that is now prosperous and we also see the other husbands say vocally well i want now i want to be a part of that business they didn't believe in the business at first but now they want to be a part of it and it seems and it gives us this jealousy vibe of but what about me and what about my career when a lot of women have felt that way and taken the back seat having the children putting their careers last thinking of the family fast thinking first thinking of the husband first and putting their endeavors last and now we see this shift so it's amazing to actually see this in this series it has been happening for a while we have medical statistics changing we have career statistics changing and now we're seeing this blossom and bloom of more black women doing the same being entrepreneurs being business women, being the ones that say, I want to take control of this certain situation. So I love that we're seeing this via black women on this show. Now, let's just talk about not only the Western society development of career and family. Let's also talk about how black women have been the rocks to take care of everyone. And it's this do it all or lose it all mentality. Black men, women would rather do it all and take care of it all rather than to there to be a loss. Now, let's be real. Let's talk about history. Let's talk about how racism and slavery main focus was taking out the black man from um, family. We see prosperous cities and businesses of black people having their own endeavors. And because of massacres and all of these things, they take the black man out of the equation. If you do your research closer towards the 40s and 50s, we see the big bang of a lot of black uh, economy booming and being being very pro- uh, prosperous. You can go even way before that. I mean, you can go way before that politically, business-wise, how the black dynamic was doing their own, making their own, living their own, being with their own. And because of massacres, because of racism, because of slavery, and taking that black man out of the equation destroyed and had a ripple effect to the rest of the family. When you see saw another revamp of black people Again, starting that crescendo of owning their own, being their own, and having their own, we have the 80s to where we have the crack pandemic, a crack epidemic to where it's brought into those societies. And with crack, you had not only more people getting on drugs, but now you have this crescendo of black men being incarcerated, leaving the families and the women behind. So it's this constant wave of things introduced via racism to black families so if you think about the order of things if majority of those men were in jail leaving behind the children you have the black woman left doing the same thing with slavery well if the man's not here we've got to proceed and we've got to go forward we see that in statistics of more black women being in college and having educations than the black man because if the black women didn't go forward what would we have so we see this dynamic within families black families of women being the rocks and the counterparts and then having generations of children lacking male influence lacking 
being educated about fatherhood and seeing fatherhood. So it's this revamp of learning ourselves and learning that we see Jerez, even though Marie is married to him, that of course, I can make an educated guess that with family counseling, counseling, he will mention not only her current husband not being there, but is his birth father active in his life? Is the birth father involved with making sure that he has guidance from his behavior and everything that's going on? It seems like it's Marie and just Marie. So that could be the really, really rude. I agree with Essie on that. And what isn't helping him, Jerome? deal with anger but we also have to look at responsibility as well Jarell has to take Jerez has to take responsibility and knowing that it's not cool man that you have three different babies mothers and all of the children are under a year so it's this back-to-back -back behavior that you've been doing but what if you learn in any sociology or psychology one-on-one -on -one course if you don't have love where you are you seek it in other places where you try to find love, comfort, and attention in other places when you aren't getting it at home, and that can backfire a lot. So we saw a lot in in this episode, which is just amazing. Um, I also like the fact how the councilman stamps talked about business and working together, creating this ecosystem and saying, hey, we need to work together to get things going. We need to inspire one another because it's one thing to have togetherness and community and all of these things. But let's be honest, it all takes money. It takes money to get things churning and it takes money to get things going. So I do like that Leticia is moving forward, trying to get business people together to talk about ideas, to talk about how money needs to be put together, to talk about how they're needs to be planning it's great it's beautiful to see what's unfortunate to me emotionally as a black woman is to see it's this mountain climb that black people always have to do it's this pushback pushback of america when we have things going for us and there's always this change and other things that are put in our ways other walls other blocks other things that try to go into law and things that 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 prevent us from being successful and it's just this constant why can't we just live? We just want to live. We want to be humans. We want to have the same rights as everybody else. So I love this series. Like I said in the, the second review is that we have to check our minds and the way that we view this show because a lot of reality shows just so show drama, drama, drama all the time. Now that we see this show, I was saying to myself, if this, this show's coming off kind of dry. And I said in the review too, for episode two, that I had to check my way of thinking and saying, this is what this show seems to be doing. They're trying to focus more on the entrepreneurship and the business evolution of these four of these women, these, these four and five uh, women that are on the cast. And I like that. So I'm glad we're seeing this diff different perspective. Now with life, there will always be some type of drama. There will always be a little hiccups here and there. But it doesn't seem like drama is the platform of this series so far. And I can dig it. I like it. Let me know what you think. Make sure that you comment, like this video, and make sure to follow me on Instagram. Let me know your thoughts, whether you agree, whether you disagree. Are you liking the series? Um, are there any key points that you would like to elaborate on? I love seeing your opinions. Even if we, we disagree, I love seeing that people like to just say how they feel about the series and what they saw. Until next time, I'll see ya. Have a good one.